Are you stuck between the Mac Studio M2 Ultra and the brand new M3 Ultra? You're not alone. This video breaks down everything you need to know before you drop four grand on one of these powerhouses. From specs and pricing to real world performance in photography, video editing, 3D, AI, and even gaming, this is the ultimate buyer's guide. Let's dive in. Specification. Let's kick things off with the hardware. The M2 Ultra packs a 24-core CPU with 16 performance and 8 efficiency cores. But the M3 Ultra? That's a 32-core beast with 20 performance and 12 efficiency cores. It's built on a more efficient 3 nanometer process, which means better thermals and faster performance. GPU options also scale up. M2 Ultra tops out at 76 GPU cores. The M3 Ultra takes it to 80 cores and brings hardware ray tracing and mesh shading for pros and gamers alike. Unified memory? M2, Ultra caps at 192 gigabytes. But the M3 Ultra gives you up to 512 gigabytes. That's wild. Perfect for 3D rendering, VFX, or AI. You also get better input slash output. The M2 Ultra has Thunderbolt 4 and Wi-Fi 6E. The M3 Ultra upgrades to Thunderbolt 5 and Wi-Fi 7. Better connectivity, faster speeds. Price. So how much are we spending here? Both base models start at 3,199 with 64 gigabytes of RAM and a 60 core GPU. Upgrade to 128 gigabytes of RAM and a higher end GPU and the M2 Ultra hits around $5,800 while the M3 Ultra climbs to about $6,300. Max them out with storage and memory, and the M2 Ultra reaches 8K. The M3 Ultra? Nearly 10K, so you're definitely paying more. But are you getting more? Well, keep watching. Benchmarks. Let's get into raw numbers. Geekbench 6 single core. M2 Ultra hits 2,170. M3 Ultra? 2,530. That's a 17% jump. Multicore? 27,000 versus 32,500. Again, around 20% faster on M3. Cinebench R23 scores back this up. And in Blender, rendering the BMW test scene drops from 45 seconds on the M2 to just 37 on the M3. Artificial intelligence tasks show an even bigger gap. The M3's upgraded neural engine is 60% faster at machine learning inference. Huge if you work with AI tools. Photography. Photographers, here's your moment. Capture one imported 500 RAWs in three minutes, 20 seconds on M2 Ultra. M3 Ultra did it in 245. Exporting those to JPEG in Lightroom Classic, four minutes, 50 seconds versus 355. That's nearly a minute saved. In Photoshop, layer heavy composites respond faster on the M3 Ultra. Latency drops from 1.2 seconds to 0.8 seconds when applying effects. Less waiting, more creating. Video editing. Let's talk Final Cut, Premiere, and Resolve. Final Key renders a 10-minute 4K ProRes file in 455 on M2 Ultra. M3 does it in 4 flat. In Premiere Pro, exporting H.264 takes 640 on M2, 515 on M3. Resolve is where things get spicy. M2 handles three streams of 4K RAW smoothly. The M3, over five. And timeline performance is twice as fast. More streams, less caching, faster delivery. VFX, 3D modeling, AI and gaming. In After Effects, rendering a two minute 4K comp. M2 Ultra takes 615. M3 Ultra, just 450. In Blackmagic Fusion, a 25-node composite goes from 440 on the M2 to 330 on the M3. Blender, a 3 million poly model renders in 940 on the M2 versus 720 on the M3. LLM inference with GPTJ, 22 tokens SEC on M2 and a wild 38 on M3. Gaming, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, 95 FPS on M2, 120 FPS on M3. Baldur's Gate 3, 70 versus 88. Resident Evil 4, 78 versus 95 FPS. Better frame pacing, 
fewer drops, smoother gameplay, buyer's guide. So here's the bottom line, a detailed guide for every kind of user. Photographers, if your workflow revolves around Lightroom, Photoshop, and Capture One, the M2 Ultra is more than enough, even for medium format RAWs. But if you're batch processing thousands of files or doing AI-enhanced upscaling, the M3 Ultra will save you hours each week. Videographers, if you regularly work in 4K or 8K, especially with multi-cam timelines in Final Cut or DaVinci Resolve, the M3 Ultra gives you better export times, smoother playback, and headroom for future codecs. For 1080p or light 4K work, M2 Ultra still flies. VFX artists and motion designers, M3 Ultra is a no-brainer. Faster rendering in After Effects, Fusion, and 3D apps like Blender is critical if you're on deadlines. M2 Ultra holds up, but you'll feel the lag with high node count compositions. AI and machine learning users, M3. Ultra's faster neural engine and memory bandwidth make it ideal for training and deploying models locally. If you're doing LLM inference, image generation, or using tools like Runway or Luma, you want the M3. Gamers. Both machines can handle Mac native AAA titles surprisingly well, but the M3 Ultra offers better ray tracing support, higher frame rates, and more consistent performance. If you're serious about gaming on Mac OS, this is your best bet. Power users and developers. If you compile code, run local servers, or manage big datasets, the M3 Ultra gives you future-proof performance. But if you want value and you're not maxing out your machine, M2 Ultra is still a tank. Final thought? Buy what matches your workflow today and what you'll still need in three to five years. Simple as that and please do not overthink. So is the M3 Ultra worth it? For cutting edge workflows, yes. For the rest, the M2 Ultra still holds its crown. If this helped you out, hit like, smash that subscribe button and drop a comment below. What's your main workflow and which Mac Studio are you going with? Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.